Hey guys, so in the last video we learned how to use GraphQL along with Express and we also learned how to query our API using GraphQL and we produced something like this where we could query for specific books with IDs and also get all of the books back. So today we're going to finish this out by adding the other CRUD functionality uh, using create, update and delete. So we're going to allow the user to create books update existing books and delete existing books. So to do that, we're gonna use mutations. Um, before in the last video, um, we created this root query and we're gonna be doing something similar except we're gonna be creating a mutation. And this is what it's called in GraphQL. So we're gonna say const mutation equals new GraphQL object type. By the way, um, if you didn't see the last video, I'm going to be putting all this source code up so you should be able to get to the same starting point there and also by the way for this video we aren't using a database and um, we're actually just using this data in memory uh, so if you're using this for your project you should probably be interacting with the database here inside the resolve functions um, but for this and um, just because we're explaining graphql we're doing all of this in memory. So we just have this array called books that's keeping track of our books. So back to the mutation, we need to give it a name um, called mutation. And again, we're gonna give it fields. This time our first field is gonna be called add book. And its type is again gonna be book type. And it's gonna take args. Um, and the args this time is going to be more uh, than an ID. It's going to have a title, uh, which is of type GraphQL string. And it's going to, that's all it's going to need, actually, um, because we are going to be creating our availability and the ID ourselves. So that's all we need for args. Uh, so now we can create our resolve function, which is going to take a parent value and args as parameters and now inside resolve we're going to create this book so first of all it's going to have a title which is going to come from args.title then it's going to have an id which we're just going to get from books.length uh, so this would be the third book so the id would be th three um, Oh no, the ID would be two, so that's fine. Zero, one, two. Cool. Uh, and we also need availability, which we're just gonna default to true whenever we create a book. So now we're gonna say books.push this book to the end of the array. And then we're gonna return the book, just so the user of the API knows that it was inserted correctly. And now at the bottom where we exported this query, we also want to export the mutation and um, we could do this uh, or we could use the new ES6, e ES6 syntax and just leave it like this um, because our variable is named the same as the field. So we can save that and going back into the browser, if we refresh, we should now see this new root type called mutation and we can use that. Uh, so I'm just going to comment this out. And we're going to say mutation. And this mutation is going to be add book. And we need to provide in our parameters. So the only parameter we need is title. And I apologize to any Harry Potter fans, but we're going to call it Harry Potter 2. And then we need to define what we want back. So we're just going to say title. We'll actually get everything back ID and available. So now if I run this query, uh, something is wrong. Uh, we seem to have done something weird here. Um, we want ID, title, and available. So now if I run this again, we can see this book was inserted um, and it has an ID of two, it's called Harry Potter 2. Um, we can create another one called another book. And if we run this, we can see it was created and we're getting this information back. And just to show it's actually changed the um, books, uh, we'll just run this query as well. 
So now you can see that we have four books um, and they all have availability and title. And we can take this one out just so we can see the books. And all the books are there. But as we're using Nodemon, if I make any changes here and hit save, the server will restart. And if I go back in the browser and run this query again, we lose the other books because um, all of our stuff in memory is being lost. And we're just starting off with these books. Um, so this is just for development and our testing purposes. And you guys, if you're using this properly, you should be interacting with the database here, as I said. So now that we have the create functionality, next, of all, next we're gonna add the edit functionality. So for this, we're gonna add another field and you guessed it, we're gonna call it edit book. And it's gonna be quite similar to the one above, um, type of book type. And this time the args, um, we're gonna give them the ability to edit the title of the book, uh, which is a GraphQL string. And we're also gonna give them the ability to edit the availability of the book, which has a type of GraphQL Boolean. So if they take a book out, they should be able to change the availability. And we also need to provide an argument of the ID because we need to know what book they're talking about editing. So here, um, we also need to do something a bit different here for the type because this is gonna be a required argument. So inside type, we're gonna use um, this thing that we haven't used before, GraphQL non-null, but we imported in the previous video. So we're creating a new instance of GraphQL not null and we're passing in GraphQL int. So we're saying we're providing an argument of ID, um, which is an integer, and it's not allowed to be null. So that's our arguments. Again, we're gonna create a resolve function, which takes parent value and args as parameters. And now inside resolve, we need to get the index um, of the book that we want to edit. So to do that, we're gonna say const index equals books dot find index. Um, and we're gonna say b and we're finding whenever b.id equals args.id. So this is the index of our book. Um, so if it's found, um, so just if index is greater than negative one, we want to edit some things. So we've allowed the user to edit the title and the availability. So if um, args.title, we're gonna say books, at the index that we found, dot title equals args dot title. And again, um, you will probably be doing stuff with the database here, and that's okay. But because I'm using these books in memory, this is the way we need to do it. Um, so we're going to do the same thing, except for available books at the index dot available equals args dot available and we can save that and then once this is done we just want to return books and at that index if we hit save um, this edit book field has just been appended on to mutation and um, so this should all work without any other changes so we have no errors here uh, we actually have an error I'm assuming we forgot a uh, comma, yes. So if I hit save, now we have no errors. And we're gonna try this other mutation. First of all, we want to query and we have these two books. Um, and now we want to write our mutation, which is, we need to refresh. So it gets our new mutation called edit book. And we're gonna be editing at ID uh, one. Um, and we also want to pass in what we're editing. So we're gonna say available is now false. Uh, I'll make this a bit bigger so you guys can see. And whenever we edit, we want to get something back. We want to get the ID, we want to get the title, and we want to get available. So I'm gonna comment out this query um, and hit run. And you can see we've edited this book but available still seems to be true for some reason. 
So we need to check something there. Okay, so what was wrong here is actually pretty interesting. So we have this args not available and we're checking that, but it's never actually going inside here because we're passing in false. Um, so this if is never being passed. So instead we want to say if args dot has um, own property and pass in available. Um, so even if this is false, uh, even if the value of the property is false, this if will still pass. Uh, so let's try this out. If we run this mutation with available false, um, something is, um, this needs to be in quotes. Uh, if we run this again, we can see it's now uh, making the change and available is being changed to false. Um, and now if I run the query to get all the books, you can see that available of this book is now false. Um, and we can also change the title um, by saying title um, and running that. And now you can see available is still false and it has a new title. And if we run the query, um, this will also work. And we can also add another book. Uh, comment this out. If we add another book um, and then edit this other book to have available or oh, false, this will also work. Um, So now uh, we have three books and the bottom two are not available. So this is our edit and create functionality. The last thing we want to do is learn how to delete one of these using GraphQL. So to do that, we're gonna go back here and we're gonna add another mutation. And this one is gonna be called uh, delete book. And again, it's gonna have a type of, you guessed it, book type. Uh, similar to before, it's going to have args, uh, this time just an ID though, uh, and it's going to be required again. And we have a resolve function, which takes parent value and args. And this resolve function is going to be quite uh, similar to the edit functionality, as we need to find at the index and then just remove it. Um, so we're going to get the index here and save that and again we're going to see if index is greater than negative one. We want to get the element um, so we want to do books.splice at the index and just a length of one uh, and we want to get the first index of this array. This splice basically takes um, this array and gets this amount of elements uh, starting at this index. So we just want to get the first element from that. As we just want one element, the element at this index. And we're removing it. Uh, and then we just want to return this element. So if we save this, uh, we should now be able to delete books. So running this, if I run the query just to get the books, we can see we're getting them. Um, and now we want to use a mutation called delete book. And we're gonna pass in an ID of zero. Um, and then we just want to get back the title and the available. So if we run this mutation, we can see it's actually deleted the book. Um, and we can verify that by going here and running this query. And you can see now we just have that one book. Um, and again, we can add in another book. Um, and then get the books again.
and this all works. So we have our complete create, read, update, and delete functionality here using GraphQL. If there's anything else you'd like to see to do with GraphQL, please let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.